हेलो गाइस दिस इज चेतन वर्मा एंड यू आर वाचिंग माय यूट्यूब चैनल सीएसपी इंस्टीट्यूट तो आज मैं आपके लिए लेके आया हूँ एक और लेक्चर सीरीज जो कि है पाइथन के ऊपर तो पाइथन के ऊपर मैं जितना भी हो सके जितना भी कंटेंट हो सके मैं कवर करने की कोशिश करूँगा आई विल स्टार्ट द पाइथन फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग इट एंड आई विल टच ऑल द आस्पेक्ट ऑफ पाइथन वन बाय वन सो ओके चलो देखते हैं क्या हम पाइथन के साथ में कर सकते हैं ये प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज क्यों डिफरेंट है अनदर प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस से एंड क्यों आज की डेट में पाइथन इतनी ज़्यादा पॉपुलर है सो लेट्स गेट बिगिन सो प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस लाइक सी पॉस्कल और फोर्टन कंसंट्रेट मोर ऑन दी फंक्शनल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग इन दीज लैंग्वेजेस देयर विल बी मोर फोकस ऑन राइटिंग द कोड यूजिंग फंक्शन For example, we can imagine a C program as a combination of several functions. Computer scientists uh, thought that programming will be become easy for human beings to understand if it is based on real life examples. Hence, they developed object oriented programming language. We also call OOPs. Okay, so. like java and dot net where programming is done through through class and object programmers started migrating from c to java and java soon become the most popular language in the software community in java like here you can see here we have java program so in a uh, in java a programmer should express his logic through classes and objects only it is not possible to write a program without writing at least one class this makes programming lengthy for example a simple program to uh, to print just an like i just want to print hello world so here you can see i am using class hello world inside this class i i introduced uh, one more main function and in this function i just call uh this uh, print ln function and here i print hello world or take another example like i just want to uh, <coughs> add two numbers so here i introduce int a equals to 10 int uh b equal to 20 and i just want to print it so system dot out dot print ln and what i need to do nothing just a plus b that's it and you can see 30 30 is my answer here so <clears throat> but it is uh, comparatively it is quite lengthy programmers understood that in certain cases where there is no need to go for classes or objects here you can see they have introduced multiple objects like uh, system is object here now and we inside there we have out another object and inside that we have uh, print ln the method of this out object so programmers uh, realized somewhere we don't want class and object every time we don't want this <clears throat> this type of coding is consuming more time and in such cases they do not want to create classes or objects rather they want to write c style coding the same program to add two numbers can be written in c as like in c i just want to see show you ki how to write same program in c so this is our include uh, stdio dot h int main and here we need to uh, do same thing we need to declare the variable value int a int b equal to twenty and print f a plus b sorry percentage uh, percentage d and a plus b and so it should be comma and boom our program has been run, running <laughs>
so of course the preceding program is almost same as that of java you can see like what we had done so far we had this is same as we had done in java but the thing is there is no improvement in the length of the code another program is that if the programmers go for c language they will miss the object orientation which is lagging lacking in c object orientation becomes an advantage when they want to deal with heavy projects nowadays programmers want c style coding as well as the java style object orientation when they want to develop functional aspects like calculation or uh, processing they want to use c style coding and uh, when they they are need, in need of going for classes and objects they will use java style coding the answer the only answer for their requirement is python so we have seen uh, c and uh, java program difference and see this is a simple hello world java program but it quite lengthy comparatively see like every time we need to include class and objects and we need to uh, if whatever we just want to do we need to include all class and objects but in c we this is lacking so and here you can see this is a c program so now talking about python so python is a programming language that combines the feature of c and java you remember this python is a programming language that combine both the combi uh, the feature of c and java okay it offers elegant style of developing programs like c okay when the programmers want to go for object orientation python offers classes and objects like java so java features are also covered with python and c elegant behavior can are also covered by the python when in python the program to add two numbers will be as follows let me show you uh, see this is online platform rapid so uh, here you can uh, execute your uh, python program you can come here and execute your python program so here just simply we need to make main.py file that's it and i came here and if i just want to add two numbers suppose so i no need to do anything a equals to 10 uh, b equals to b equals to 20 and print a plus b and run and you can see boom 30 here you can see the answer 30 but in uh, c we need to do all these stuffs we need to include all the libraries uh, standard libraries and input output libraries and then uh, we need to do anything inside the function main function only here in c plus plus same theory in java also same it is very uh, lengthy but here in python you can see this is very short and sweet the preceding code is easy to understand and develop hence python is gaining popularity among the programming folks of course there are several other features of python which we will discuss in future which make it the preferred choice of most programmers coming to a bit of history let's talk something about the python their history and all so python was developed by this person guido van rossum in the year 1991 at the center uh, for mathematics and computer science managed by the dutch government van rossum was working on a project to develop system utilities in c where he had to interest Uh, sorry he had to interact with the boron cell available in unix so uh, his basic work to uh, like boron cell that was available in unix he felt the necessity of developing a language that would fill the gap between c and cell so he just want to fulfill uh, the gap uh, 
whatever gap is laying between C and cell. So he wanted to develop such kind of language. This has lead to creation of Python. That's it. Van Rossum picked the name Python for a new language from the TV show. Maybe you heard about this TV show, Monty Fly uh, Python's Flying Circle. Monty Python's Flying Circus. So maybe you heard about this. So he took the name of the language Python from this show. Python's first working version was ready by early 1990. And Van Rossum released it for the public on February. Remember the date. Fab 20, 1991. Fab 20, 1991. So he released it in February 20, 1991. The logo of Python as you can see here. Uh, shows two intertwined uh, snacks. See, there are two intertwined snacks are there. It is like snacks. So this is the logo as you can see here. Python is an open source uh, software. Which means anybody can freely download it from the www.python.org uh, uh, and use it to develop programs at source code can be accessed and modified as required in the project so this is the advantage of python so let's talk about the features of python there are various uh, reasons why python is gaining good popularity in the programming community the following are the some of the important feature of python let's see one by one first is simple Python is a simple programming language as you can see uh, as you have seen so far key here you can see writing a Python program is uh, relatively much easier comparatively C and Java when we read a Python program we feel like reading English sentences here you are reading English sentences like a equals to 10 B equals to 20 like here I did like this like I used uh this but i uh, don't require it actually if i don't include it it executes so it is same like like if uh, like we are reading english language a equal to 10 b equal to 20 print a plus b so <clears throat> it means more clarity and less stress on understanding the syntax of the language hence developing and understanding programs will become easy okay so like uh, if i just want to print hello world so print double invert uh, comma hello that's it if i just want to include this i can include if i don't want to include this just leave it so let's see my first programming pro uh, uh, python program print hello and you can write your name uh, hello uh, Chetan Verma so and you can see here boom hello Chetan Verma so this is my first Python program but in C I just uh, need to write all these stuffs first Hash include uh, include stdio dot dot h then int main inside that I then I need to print hello world. See, let me show you print f hello world and there I need to include this and this is my first program in C but here this is very easier. You can see this is one line code, one line code program in C only, uh, Python. So uh, next term is, as I told you, this is very much easy to learn. So this is very easy to learn. Python uses very few keywords. 
it uh, its programs use very simple structure so developing programs in python become easy also python uh, resembles c language most of the language uh, constructs in c are also available in python hence migrating from c to python is easy to program so here we can write easy to learn nowadays 10th class students and uh, below uh, secondary also students are learning python because it is like english language it is not it is unscript actually then open source as i told you before also there is no need to pay for python software python can be freely downloaded uh, from www.python.org website its source code can be read modified and can be used in programs as desired by the programmers then we have higher level language so you may be amazed ki python is also higher level language so as you can see here programming languages are of two types basically one is low level languages uh, and higher level languages a uh, low level languages uses machine code instruction to develop python uh, program these kind of languages are low level languages like machine languages are low level languages here we have zero and one and then we have middle level languages and as we are moving above level of abstraction is increasing and it is more near to the user but far away from the machine hardware so as we are increasing the level of abstraction it is moving towards higher level language okay these instructions that uh, like uh, in lower language lang uh, lower uh, level languages the instructions directly interact with cpu so zero and one is the computer language machine language basically machine language and assembly language are also uh, also called lower level language see uh, this is also considered to be a lower level language okay higher level languages use english words to develop programs these are easy to learn and use for the user like cobol php or python and java also uses english words in each program and hence it is called higher level language or higher level programming language so hope you have understood this then we have another feature of python is dynamically typed this is very important in python we need uh, we need not declare anything and uh, assignment statement bindings a name to an object and the object can be of any type if a name is assigned to an object of one type it may later be assigned to an object of different type this is the meaning of the saying that python is a dynamically typed language languages like c and uh, java are st uh, statically typed in these languages the variable names and data types should be mentioned properly attempting to assign an object of wrong type to a variable name triggers error or exception see i have made it uh, take x axis is uh, uh, dynamically uh, minus x axis is dynamically typed and plus axis is an uh, static type and uh, y axis positive y axis is strong and uh, negative y is weaker so as we are moving towards strong uh, and static here we uh, we can see c sharp scala uh, java f sharp these kind of languages are uh, strong and static static strong language as we are moving towards negative x axis you we can see the dynamically strong dynamically type languages are python ruby and some another languages are also mentioned here maybe you don't heard the name of these languages then we have dynamically weak language like perl php javascript vb 
and uh, weak static languages are C and C++. So let me sh uh, show you how it is uh, dynamically typed language. Suppose initially I have given a equal to 10 and I print it a and after few couple of lines I just given uh, assign some another value to a uh, hello the string to the a variable a and now I can print a let's see what what will happen so here we can see this a because it is equals to 10 so it prints 10 and then because a equals to hello it prints hello so here you can see easily we can change the type because this is dynamically typed language but in c we cannot do so if i just want to do same thing in c suppose uh, int c equal to 10 and c equals to uh, hello and print f c sorry s so it will show you error the error is c equal to string because this is the data type of int we cannot assign a string to it every time we need to mention the data type before any variable but in python this is not required at all that's why python is more easier than c if you are not understanding uh, the c program don't worry guys just focus on python because python is much easier than c and another language so focus on uh, python itself i'm just motivating you people why python is uh, uh, popular nowadays and why uh, python we should use in our programs because it is very easier okay so as you can see in c it is very tedious task to uh, to do all this uh, dynamically type languages uh, part but in python we can easily do so okay hope you have understood so far what i have given you an example okay so <clears throat> Let's uh, do some uh, comparison between static programming language and dynamically programming uh, language. So type checking uh, occurs at compile time. As uh, we are compiling it, so type checking, compiler will do uh, check, it will check the type. Actually, in C, if I declared one variable in C program, so it will check what is the uh, type of this variable C. So the type is integer. So every time type checking will be occurred. Then in dynamically programming language, type checking occurs at runtime only, not in, uh, not at compilation time, only at runtime. So suppose a equal to ten, I have assigned this value, and uh, afterwards I assign some another value uh, like a string to it. So because it is runtime checking, first it will check a equal to 10 so data type is int here and afterwards a equal to hello so data type is a string here so dynamically it can change its data type variables do not need to be defined before they are used a string uh, before they are used like a string my name so my name equal to john but here variables uh, must be defined uh, before they are used so uh, my name equal to john so i need to do so here variables are bound to a data type no specific data type here in dynamic uh, programming language we also call it dpl and spl so in spl slower uh, development cycle is there here fast development cycle is there type safety on runtime as solved in uh, compile time but here type errors on runtime suppose i just want to add something in a string so it will show you uh, the error on runtime 
but here it will show the error on compilation time. So this is uh, some advantages are there for static programming language over the uh, DPL but uh, DPL is much popular than SPL because there are a lot of disadvantages of SPL. So uh, <coughs> this is difference between SPL and DPL. Let's move forward. Then we have platform independent. So uh, when a Python program is created using a Python compiler, it generates bytecode. Let's see. Uh, let me uh, let me give you some example. Okay, we'll see some small uh, example. Suppose I develop one Python program, uh, main dot pi, and here summation of two number a equal to ten. B equal to 20 and print A plus B and control plus S. I just want to run it. So, uh, Python, uh, Python main dot pi. Boom. Answer is 30. But I just want to see the byte code of this uh, particular file. So how to check it? So Python, you just write it. Python, uh, yeah, uh, m and then this, then main dot pi. Enter and here you can see the byte code, the byte code of this main file. So now we can uh, see that how Python converts name program the, the uh, python program compiler compiler of the program can change the uh, program of python into bytecode so this is the bytecode of this particular summation of two number okay so you can see as you are not understanding what is it so don't worry guys this is just an uh, just sake of example so here i'm i was telling you ki how python was uh, uh, converting the compiler of uh, the uh, compiler of Python is generating bytecode. Python's bytecode represents a fixed set of instructions. Here you can see these are fixed set of instructions. See, but it is much length uh, lengthy than uh, relatively to Python program. Okay. That uh, that run on all operating systems and hardware. Though it is uh, uh, it is lengthy than a uh, Python program, uh, but it can run on all type of operating system, either on Mac, on uh, uh, like Windows or uh, Unix. We can uh, run this uh, bytecode on any kind of uh, operating system and hardware also. Using a Python virtual machine, this is also called PVM. Here you can see PVM is there, Python, uh, Python virtual machine. Anybody can run these bytecode instructions on any computer system. Hence, Python programs are not depend, dependent on any specific operating system. We can use Python on almost all operating systems like Unix, Linux, and Windows, uh, Solaris, OS2, there are a lot of operating systems. We can run our Python programming, um, Python program on any of these. This makes Python an ideal programming language for any network or internet. So as we have seen so far, our source code, uh, here they have taken uh, Davos, uh, Davos schools I generated main.py with the help of compile, compile using Python compiler. I converted my program into main.pyc file and with the help of interpreter, I just convert it into binary code. This is also called uh, machine code and with the help of computer hardware, I generate the output. So I hope you have understood how the Python program convert into the binary code and execute. Then 
our python program is portable <laughs> we can uh, when a program yields the same result on any computer in the world then it is called a portable uh, program okay <laughs> python programs will give the same result since they are platform independent once a pro python program is written it can run on any computer system using python virtual machine however python can uh, also contains some system dependent modules or code which are specific to operating system programmers should be careful about such code while developing the software if they want it to be completely portable so remember it it is portable any coder can carry it okay <laughs> it's just an example don't uh, take it serious then it is uh, li like uh, this is object oriented programming system so python is a, a processor oriented as well as uh, object oriented programming language in processor oriented programming language example c and pascal the programs are built using functions and processors so we have concept of pp uh, uh, programming process uh, <coughs> programming uh, processor oriented uh, pop we have and ops we have so python is both pop as well as ops based programming language but in object oriented programming languages like c++ and java the, the programs use classes and objects okay but in python uh, we can go with pop also and ops also so we'll talk more about ops in our further videos okay then it is interpreted also a program co uh, code is called source code here we have seen so far above the program code is also called source code which is uh, we have uh, specified in our uh, main.py as i made one code here main.py so this is my source code okay then uh, <coughs> after writing a python program we should compile the source code using python compiler we need to uh, compile it python compiler translates the python program into a intermediate code called bytecode so python uh, uh, con compiler converts the source code into bytecode the extension of this bytecode is .pyc okay this bytecode is then executed by pvm python virtual machine okay inside the pvm an interpreter converts the bytecode instructions into machine code so that the processor will understand and run that machine code to produce result so interpreter converts the uh, uh, the byte code into machine binary code and uh, with the help of uh, machine code we can execute our program okay so <clears throat> hope you have understood uh, the concept of interpreter like uh, how interpreter helps actually there is difference between compiler and interpreter so let me tell you this shortly compiler converts all the script uh, one script into uh, the uh, byte code and with the help of byte code one by one each line <coughs> interpretates into uh, machine code okay so hope you have understood so far uh, what i want to tell you so interpretates uh, plays an important role in python programming suppose we have client here and we have provider here and uh, you can understand it like uh, clients want to uh, talk with a provider but provider doesn't understand uh, the uh, language of this client so we have interpreter uh, between both of these so if client want to communicate with provider so interpreter can help the client to talk with provider so hope you have understood so far and then a python programming is also extensible extensible 
you are amazed like why I'm using uh, the extensible wire here so to I'm giving you an analogy so through that you can memorize it for long period of time so the programs for piece pieces of code written in C or C++ can be integrated into Python this is very beautiful feature of uh, Python and executed using PVM and we can execute it using PVM this is what we see in standard python that is downloaded uh, from www.python.org there are other flavors of python where programs from other languages can be integrated into python for example jython we have version of uh, python uh, flavor of python is called jython also we have is useful to integrate java code into python programs and run on jvm java virtual machine so we can run uh, python program and uh, uh, on jvm also similarly iron python is useful to integrate dot net program okay and libraries into python programs are and run on clr common language runtime so we have clr in dot net so we can run there okay <coughs> then at last uh, sorry embedded uh, feature of python we can insert this is embedded feature embedded embeddable feature so we can insert python programs into a c or c++ programs several applications are already developed in python which can be integrated into other programming languages like C, C++, PHP, Java and .NET. It means programmers can use these applications for their advantage in various software projects. And huge library, Python consists huge library. Python has a big library which can be used on any operating system like Unix, Windows or Macintosh. Programmers can develop, uh, develop programs very easily using uh, modules available in Python library. Okay, so Python consists huge library because this is open source and a uh, lot of uh, um, developers uh, uh, dedicate their time to develop the python library so that's why it consists huge library and this is the biggest advantage of python okay then a scripting language uh, a scripting language is a programming language that does uh, does not use a compiler for executing the source code Rather, it uses an interpreter to translate the source code into machine code on the fly while running. Like uh, languages such as C and C++, they require compiler uh, to convert into machine code. So this is source code with the help of compiler we can convert into machine code and we get output. But uh, Python provides us a scripting language uh, benefit also. So with the help of this uh, source code, uh, with the help of interpreter, we can convert into and execute it uh, with the help of interpreter and uh, while running itself or also called flying, running or flying. Okay. Generally, scripting languages uh, perform supporting tasks for a bigger application or so software. For example, PHP is a scripting language. Maybe you heard about PHP language. So this is also a scripting language that performs supporting task of uh, taking import input from an HTML page and send it send it uh, to web server software. Python is considered as a scripting language as it is interpreted and it is used on internet to support other software so hope you have understood why scripting language is important for us okay so nowadays uh, uh, python we can use python instead of using uh, php we can also use python
okay we will talk uh, later regarding this how we can use python uh, then we have database connectivity database connectivity a database uh, represents a software that stores and manipulates data for example oracle is a popular uh, oracle is a popular uh, database or mysql is also a popular uh, database when we ca uh, we can store data in the form of tables and manipulate the data python provides interfaces to connect its program to all the major databases like oracle mysql sybase and there are many more okay so with the help of python application pycharm we can do so okay uh, we'll talk regarding this one by one don't worry if you don't know anything regarding this in this on uh, in this only we will talk about this and you can also watch my video on uh, mysql so you can go with that then it is scalable a program uh, would be scalable if it could be moved to another operating system or hardware and take full advantage of new environment in terms of performance python programs are scalable since they can run on any platform and use the features of new platform effectively so these are scalable also let me write scalable okay and then this is batteries included so the huge library of python contains several small applications or some small packages which are already developed and immediately available to programmers these small packages can be used and maintained easily thus the programs programmers need not download separate packages or applications in many cases this will give them a hard start in many projects these libraries are called battery included some interesting batteries or packages are given here like uh, let me write for you are are pos and then we have bodies cherry by and then we have fino fiona jellyfish let me tell you shortly regarding this uh, our uh, paras parse is a package that represents command line uh, parsing uh, library then we have botois um, amazon web service library and then we have cherry pie is an object oriented html framework okay cherry pie and then we have uh, one more cryptography offers cryptographic techniques uh, for programmers then we have fiona uh, reads and write big data files then we have jellyfish is a library for doing appropriate or ex uh, approximate and uh, phonetic matching of strings then we have numpy uh, numpy is a package for processing arrays of single or multi dimensional types we have pandas matplotlib uh, pilo pyquery skype and uh, w3lib uh, lib uh, whoosh so there are multiple uh, battery included libraries are there so i have told you like no need to include these libraries as we are uh, dealing with that so this is the uh, benefit of python okay so i hope you have understood uh, all the features of python so let's talk about some flavors of python uh, very first c python so what is c python a flavor let me tell you about the flavor of python first flavor of python refers uh, to the different types of python compilers these uh, flavors are useful to integrate various programming languages into python the following are some of them such as c python this is the standard python compiler c python is the standard python compiler implemented in c language 
this is the python software being downloaded and used by uh, programmers directly from www.python.org uh, slash downloads in this any python program is internally converted into bytecode using c language functions okay this bytecode is run on the interpreter available in uh, python virtual machine created in c language the advantage is that it is possible to execute c and c++ functions and programs in c python so i hope you have understood the importance of c python then we have jython so jython this is earlier known as jython j uh, python the earlier name of this is j python like c python we have j python now is it is jython so this is implementation of python programming language which is designed to run on java platform jython compiler uh, first compiles the uh, python program into java bytecode this bytecode is executed by java virtual machine to produce um, the output jython contains libraries which are useful for both python and java program programmers this can be downloaded from www.jpython.org then we have iron python this is we have iron python this is another implementation of python language for dot net uh, framework this is written in c sharp language the python program when compiled gives an interpreted uh, intermediate language this is also called IL, intermediate language, which runs on common language runtime, C L R, common language runtime, to produce the output. This flavor of Python gives flexibility of using both the .NET and Python libraries. And <clears throat> I have given you the link here also you can download if you want to download these flavors you can download from there so you can take a screenshot and you can download from here and another we have PyPy this is python implementation using python language uh, actually PyPy is written in uh, a language called R Python, which was created in python language R Python. R Python is suitable for creating uh, language interpreters. PyPy programs run very fast since they are uh, there is a JIT just in time. JIT is called just in time. Okay, compiler added to the PVM. So in PVM, PVM is integrated with JIT just in time. PyPy can be downloaded by uh, by the provided link. So here I have provided the link. From here you can download it. And then we have another Ruby Pi. Uh, this is a bridge between the Ruby and uh, Ruby. You can see the diamond. This is Ruby Pi, Ruby and Python interpreter. Okay. So this is kind of bridge. It encloses a Python interpreter inside Ruby applications. This flavor of Python can be downloaded from, uh, of course, uh, rubygems.org, and I have provided the link for that. Then we have Stackless Python, Python uh, Pythonic C, Anaconda. This is more famous. So let me tell you something about Anaconda. When Python is redeveloped for handling large scale data processing, predictive, predictive uh, analytics and scientific computing, it is called Anaconda Python. This imp uh, implementation mainly focuses on large scale of data. So this is completely for data dedicated platform. So this is all about uh, mm, uh, the flavors of uh, Python and then we have 
Python virtual machine. So let me tell you about Python virtual machine. We have already discussed about Python virtual machine above, but let me tell you one more time what is Python virtual machine, how it does work basically. So we know that computer understand only machine code. Computer understand only machine machine code. Machine code that is zero and one. Since computer understands only machine code, it is imperative that we should convert any program into machine code before it is submitted to the computer for execution. For this purpose, we should take the help of compiler. A compiler normally converts the program source code into machine code. So what does compiler do? Compiler converts uh, source code into machine code. Okay. A Python compiler does the same task but in slightly different manner. Our Python compiler does same task but in some different manner. How it does? It converts the program source code into another code. It converts source code SC into another code. Okay. Uh, called byte code. We also call it byte code as we have discussed so far. This is very important uh, topic guys. Please give attention in, on to it. Each Python program statement is converted into a group of byte code instruction. As I shown you here, showed you here, ki how it does convert into byte code. So you can see here. This is our byte code. Okay, and then each Python program statement is converted into a group of byte code instruction. This then what is byte code the big question is what is byte code yaar okay byte code represents the fixed set of instruction created by python here byte code represents the fixed set of instruction created by python developers mm -hmm. representing all type of operation here you can see uh, behind this what is the story uh, of this program Actually, uh, computer does not understand this particular program. This is uh, useful and uh, helpful for the user itself, not for the computer. To understand, uh, to make it uh, understandable for the computer, we need to convert into a bytecode first. And then, what is bytecode then? So this is fixed set of instructions created by Python developers. So here you can see that uh, multiple types of operations are there load is there store is there push is there if you are uh, familiar with assembly language so you can easily understand it okay the size of each code uh, byte code instruction is one byte or eight bits this is very important the size of uh, uh, all the uh, all the uh, instruction of byte code is one byte which is equivalent to 8 bits and hence these are called byte code or well, that's why only th this is the reason this is called byte code because this is the size of this instruction is one byte only so that's why we call it byte code okay python organization uh, says that <coughs> let me find some place okay Python organization says that there may be new newer instructions added to the existing bytecode instructions from time to time. We can find bytecode instruction in the uh, in the dot pyc file, as you can see here. This is dot pyc file. Figure uh, like. I have shown you one figure there also like how the byte code is converted into let me make one more figure for you byte code then it converts uh, with the help of pvm this is interpreter then with the help of machine code 
and at last we can see the output on our computer screen okay the role of uh, pvm is to convert the byte code instruction into machine code so what pvm does pvm is an interpreter python virtual machine python virtual machine what it does it converts uh, the byte code instructions into machine code so that the computer can execute those machine code instructions and display the final output on the uh, computer screen to carry out this conversion pvm is occupied um, with an interpreter the interpreter converts the byte code into machine code and sends the machine code to the computer processor for execution since interpreter is playing the main role often the python virtual machine is also called an interpreter python uh, ka jo uh, pvm hai use hum kai baar interpreter bhi bolte hain because interpreter is playing main role here that's why we call it in the pvm also okay because uh, with the help of interpreter we convert byte code into machine code so hope you have understood this and uh, this is uh, uh, it about pvm i have given more brief regarding pvm so far so i hope you have understood it and then we have another concept of uh, uh, python is memory management in python in c and c++ the programmer should allocate and deallocate or uh, memory dynamically during run time with the help of reloc and malloc uh, reloc malloc and uh, uh, free these are uh, the memory management functions were there used in c and c++ for example to allocate memory the program uh, programmer must use malloc malloc function uh, and to deallocate the memory he may use the free function free function okay but in python memory allocation and deallocation are done using run time automatically automatically the programmer need not allocate memory while creating objects or deallocate memory when deleting the object python's pvm will take care of such issue this is not uh, our uh, task this is pvm task pvm take care of this everything is considered as an object in python whatever we do everything is considered as an object for example strings are objects lists are objects functions are objects even modules are also objects for every object memory should be allocated memory manager inside the pvm allocates memory required for object created in python program all these objects are stored on a separate memory called heap memory so we call it heap memory heap is the memory which is allocated during run time heap memory is allocated in run time only we have static memory also but heap memory is uh, uh, much used in python <coughs> so with the heap heap memory uh, with uh, like uh, the size of the heap memory depends on the random access memory ram of our computer and it increase or decrease its size depending on the requirement of the program so if you are talking about the total size of heap memory it's all about ram if our ram is size 4 gb so uh, Oh, it is uh, heap memory is also 4 gb 2 gb 2 gb only so like that okay and its uh, size increases or decreases while programming executes uh, or program ex uh, increases or decreases okay so let me raise it and then uh, we know that the actual memory ram for any program is allocated by the underlying operating system operating system take care of it 
on the top of the operating system a uh, row memory allocator uh, um, row memory allocator is there you can see python row memory allocator on the top of the operating system memory allocator so here we have ram and ram is underlying on operating system memory allocator and above this python row memory allocator is there so uh, whether in a uh, see this row memory allocator oversees whether enough memory is available to it for storing object on the top of the row memory allocator there are several object specific allocator operate on the same heap so you can see uh, object specific allocator are there these uh, memory allocates will be implemented different type of memory management policies depending on the type of objects for example an integer number should be stored in memory in one way and a string should be stored in different way similarly when we deal with tuple and lists they should be stored differently these issues are taken care of by object specific memory allocator so in this figure you can see this okay so here we have ram which is underlying on operating system memory allocator and above this python rows memory allocator is there and above this object specific allocator is there for list uh, it is working differently for float it works differently for the string it works differently okay and here we have pvm so i hope you have understood the use of uh, memory management in python so last but not least the we have garbage collection in python a module uh, <coughs> represents python co uh, code that performs a specific task garbage collector is a, a module in python that is useful to delete objects from memory which are not used in the program the module that represents the garbage collector is named as gc i'll talk about module and all these uh, things in future but uh, this is the introduction of python so don't worry about this this is very uh, brief history and all about the po uh, python we are talking about just features of python different features of python then garbage <coughs> collector is the simplest way to maintain a count for each object regarding how many times that object is refreshed or used when an object is refreshed twice its reference reference count will be 2 when an object has count some count it is being used in uh, the program and hence garbage collector will not remove it from the memory when an object is find uh found when a reference count is zero suppose the reference count is zero not uh, about zero the reference count is only the zero then garbage collector will understand that the object uh, is not used by the program and hence it can be deleted from the memory hence the memory allocated uh, for that object is deallocated or freed so i hope you have understood suppose garbage collector can detect it reference cycles a reference cycle is a cycle we have the name reference cycle reference cycle so let me tell you what is reference cycle reference cycles pointing to a first object from the last object for example let let us take a is pointing to B, B is pointing to C, and C is again pointing to A. So, for example, take three objects here. We have A, B, and C. So, the object A refers to object B, and object B refers to uh, uh, where B, uh, the object B holds a reference to uh, the object C. Now, if the object C refers to the first object A, it will form a reference cycle. So, I hope you have understood it. If A refers to B, uh, B refers to C and C refers to A. So, this is reference cycle. It uh, so, even if the object A, B and C are no longer used in Python program, still these objects contain one reference to each one. Since the reference count for each uh, object is 1, 
here the reference count is 1 so because of this the garbage collector will not remove this now object from the memory these objects stays uh, in memory even after the program executes completely to get around this garbage collector uses an algorithm logic for detecting uh, reference uh, cycles and removing objects in the cycle garbage collector classifies the object into three generation the new created objects are considered as n generation zero uh, sorry let me find some space for you so first is zero generation then first time when a garbage collector examines the objects in the memory and does not remove an object uh, from the memory due to the reason that the object is used by the program uh, then the uh, then that object is placed into next generation says generation one if our object is used by the program then it is considered to be a first generation object so initially our uh, garbage collector cannot remove this zero generation uh, uh, object until unless it is not being used so far <coughs> when the garbage collector intends to delete the objects from this second time and the object also survives for the second time then it is placed into the generation second okay Thus, order, older objects belong to generation 2. Uh, garbage collector tries to delete younger objects which are not referenced in the program rather than the old objects. Garbage collectors run automatically. Python schedules garbage collector depending upon a number of threshold. Remember this name, threshold. Uh, the number this number represents the frequency of how many times the garbage collector removed or collected the objects so far when the number of allocations minus the number of deallocation is greater than threshold number the garbage collector will uh, will run automatically when it will run automatically again i am telling you the uh, number of allocation minus number of deallocation is greater than threshold so the garbage collector will run automatically one can know the threshold number by using the method if you want to uh, know the threshold number you can get uh, this and threshold this is the method you can call it and can get the number of uh, no, threshold of GC module. When more and more objects are created and if the uh, system runs out of memory, then the Python automatically garbage collector will not run. Instead, the Python program will throw exception. Runtime error. When the program is sure that this his programmer uh, sorry suppose our programmer is sure that uh, his program does not contain any reference cycles then automatically garbage collector is best suitable suitable in some cases uh, where reference cycles are found in the program it is better to run the garbage collector manually for example collect method of gc can be used we can use collect method manually we can use it of gc module garbage collector module manual garbage collection can be done in two way two ways so we have two ways of manual garbage collector first is time based and another is event based Let's talk about it. If garbage collector is called in certain interval of time, it is called time-based garbage collector or time-based garbage collection. Uh, 
if the garbage collector is called on the basis of an event for example when the user disconnects for an application it is called an event based garbage collection however running the garbage collector too frequently will slow down the program execution so make sure it if you really want to do uh, make our program so keep avoiding this uh, reference cycle and uh, uh, this is all about garbage collection in python so as you can see garbage collection in python plays a very important role so i hope you have understood it and if you have any doubt regarding this you can ask uh, in the comments do comment guys and uh, i hope you have understood it thank you and have a good day